Hello everybody, this is Denise from Something Beautiful Handcrafts and I'm outside and I'm going to try to get something done today. Okay, and there goes the neighbor's dog. Huh. Well anyway, uh, I'm going to start with setting the machine up to start a sock. So, so you can see sort of what's happening. I'll show you up here. This is the cone of waste yarn. And I'm going to set this on the ground below me. And I want to zoom out so you can see the whole thing, but I don't particularly want to be seen <laughs> as usual. Not for this one anyway. And uh, the dogs are in the yard just kind of wandering around. I think Jewel is trying to get a groundhog and Boomer's trying to get Jewel. Hmm. All right, so this is threaded up through the yarn mast, which I showed at the last video, so that's pretty easy. And then I'm going to put the sock bonnet on, the cast on bonnet. Now, let me just say something about that real quick. Uh, there is a cast on basket. It's in my little stash. Okay, so here's the cast on basket. And it, it has the little serrated edges um, so that you can thread the yarn through here. We kind of loop it around as you loop it around the needles here. Cool little device with the little hook on the bottom for the weights. And that's the one I used the first time because I didn't actually know what the sock bonnet was for when it came in the mail. So here's the sock bonnet. Of course, it looks like a sock. That's why it's got a sock on it. And it's for the sock machine. And it has a Pico edge up here. And the loops are pulled up through that Pico. And you, there are 32 of them. So for half the needles that are on the machine. And you put them every other needle. And put the buckle on here. Let me show you that real quick. Because once I get the machine going, you're not going to be able to see me put the buckle on there. And the buckle, hold it upright, slide it through, okay, and then turn it, and it holds the weights on here. Okay, so anyway, and that is what you use to get the right weight on here to start your cast on. Okay, now I was looking at Pinterest because the thing is, once you've done the sock, right? And I've been doing two. I, I've seen somebody said something about in the early days where there was always a sock on the machine. And so once you started it, it was just pretty much started it. And I guess once they pulled down enough tension, they would cut those socks off and uh, whatever they needed and continue with the one on the top. If you're just making continuous socks over and over and over again. Usually I make a pair of socks, then I cut them off and I do something with that pair. Because um, I'm just making them for myself. If I was making them for any other reason, I probably would just continuously and just snip off what I needed and keep going. So at the bottom of that pair is the sock bonnet. And I want the sock bonnet back so that I can start the next pair. So you, you have to kind of cut through the waist yarn to get it off. And that can be messy because once you've cut through the waist yarn, you can't just kind of pull it and unravel it. You kind of have to get all the little pieces off first. And then sometimes you'll pull it because it went in this direction. You're pulling it in this direction and it'll get caught. It, it can get a little messy. So I was like, well, what if I had multiple sock bonnets? Uh, of course, I didn't want to take the time to make a bunch of sock bonnets, which I should anyway. So I saw where somebody used the... Um, bath scrubby things in order to cast on. I thought that was cool because you just go to the dollar store get a couple of those things. It, there's an awful lot of mesh in just one of those. That was, seemed like a great idea at the time. I put it on here. Let me tell you, that was like a little nightmare because when you're putting it on here, uh, first of all, it's wider than the cylinder. 
So you're going to wind up with an extra lump of it somewhere. And you're putting it in it and it's grabbing like all over the place. All these different needles. It's just like this big mess. And uh, then you're trying to hold it down. It just, it's, see, look at that. It was a big mess to me. And so after I had had it all tangled up and broke like three needles messing around with it, I was like, you know what? It's just, forget it. So on the ground it went. I did finally successfully get it to work um, last week. But I don't know if I want to bother with that. I'm wondering if the mesh laundry bags from the dollar store, which is actually uh, not this thin plastic, but some other kind of meshier plastic, might be a little easier to work with. Oh, excuse me, I don't know. Or maybe I should just uh, stop being lazy and make some more sock bonnets. Okay, so at any rate, what happens here is you can do this by hand. Basically, you're just laying it down onto every other needle. Okay. Sometimes this thing has a will of its own, so it does get caught. So if I'm having a problem doing it by hand, then I would get the one of the hook tools. I made a hook tool, by the way, the other day. Uh, it's not all that cute, but I'm working on that uh, with polymer clay, since I have the buttons of that stuff. And it, it makes me feel a little better because the needles that I've broken are not going to go to waste. And at some point I'll discover how to make cute handles, but they'll make great latch tools. So you can just pick that up, drop that on there. I should say pick tools and the difference between the pick tool and the latch tool is that the pick tool uh, is a, a needle with the latch removed basically okay so for me that's a lot faster this is a great opportunity too for me to make sure that all the latches are in the correct positions and see this is pretty much what I said about people say if people say I haven't had anybody actually said it to me yet uh, that this might not be real knitting oh it's not it's not real knitting uh, yeah all this still needs to be done with a human hand in this case anyway Okay, now, these needles over here are down. So, what I like to do is go ahead and put my waist yarn through here, okay? And let me make sure the needle's in the right position, because if not, uh, if the latch is anywhere it's not supposed to be, once it's turning this, I'm gonna break a latch. And then I've got a needle down, and these things are like uh, $50 for a pack of 100 which isn't like bad, it's like 50 cents each, but you kind of have to buy the pack of 100. I haven't seen any smaller packs. If anybody's listening and you've heard of some smaller packs, of course it's more economical to buy $50 worth of needles and have 100 of them, but I don't always have $50 lying around as a freelancer, so if I could get a smaller pack, that'd be nice. Okay, so I got this one right here. These two latches are not down. I need to do that now, or else it's gonna come undone as I'm knitting. Also, this needs to have weight on it in order for the stitches to knit. So, it'd be nice if I had three hands. Uh, and I could put the weight on now, but depending on how many of these I have up here, it'll make it a little harder to do the loop. So I'm just going to very slowly hold down and turn just a little bit. Okay. And see, that is what I mean about not having tension. Okay, I got another one where the latch needs to go down. 
you don't want to do anything real fast around here. Take your time. It's a good way to break needles if you're doing things real fast. Okay, so now, as far as I can see, everything is on here the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to put the buckle on. And I'm going to put the weights on. So I can't remember if I showed you this before. Here is the hook with the weight. Uh, you know what? I don't know how much each weight weighs. See if it's, it doesn't say. I have to weigh them and see. Because you've got the base right here, which is already some weight. And then these guys. And I normally knit with two of them on and what I've been doing is putting a basket underneath uh, this just in case they drop because I don't want to accidentally put my feet under there and they drop uh, which I've actually done and was able to move my foot away so uh, underneath this and the stand is uh, the rest of the weights and um, the weights for the heel, which I'll show you in that basket down there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and crank. Now, I need to spin this real quick because this is the front of the machine as I've marked it. I'm not even sure what's turned that way. The weird thing is that the three legs that are on here, they're not positioned in a way where you would have like a, a triangle shape. So you have one pointed here and then two on the side, which I think would be a better design or good for people. So I kind of, they're kind of offset where there's like one here and one kind of here. So I don't really have a good space to put my feet, not in, an, in a natural position. Not saying as a criticism, just saying and this poor thing could use a little dusting. Uh, I've been told that it should be lubricated every 15th sock or so. So I've been keeping a really good count of how many socks I've made. So I've officially made 11 socks, but I've also cranked tubes more than once. So those kind of count. So it's about time that I take the machine apart and uh, lubricate it properly and dust it properly because it's a lot of dust. And then I just uh, did some single BFL. I want to say it's BFL and not BL. I have to look at my chart. And uh, that's a long wool, a silky long wool. And so when I cranked it as a single, of course, it left little fluff pieces in places, so I need to do something about that. Uh, this is a good time to mention that um, I got a correction from Deborah about the needles. Okay, the last video I said that these are the Gerhardt needles, and I have a set of auto knitter needles, and that which needle I use depends on the cylinder, and that's not true what I should have said is that the needle that I use in the cylinder depends on whether or not I'm using the gasket so when I take this apart there's a gasket down here in the gear down here and I guess I can remove it I'm not sure why I would um, actually I'm not really sure why I would maybe maybe it gets removed with the compound uh, cylinders I, you know I have to ask somebody about that but if I was to remove the gasket that's at the bottom of the cylinder, then I would need to use the auto knitter needles, which are longer than the Gerhardt needles. So I don't know, that might be the consideration, but it's unlikely that I'm going to remove that gasket or do anything to this machine other than uh, replace needles and clean it and change cylinders when necessary. So I don't think I need to worry too much about that, but yeah, there I do have another set of auto knitter needles that go with this machine. They are slightly different. Okay, now I'm going to make some adjustments and then we'll start.
Okay, let's go ahead and get started in earnest. I'm going to try to do this as smooth as possible, but since I'm the only one recording, at some point I have to stand up and look at the camera. I'll try to make it as seamless as it can. Okay, so I started to cheat you guys and make you a half sock. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm making these ankle socks, and there's two reasons why. First of all, um, I, I have this orange yarn, and no matter how I crank it, I can never get two socks to come out the same. So I cranked three separate tubes so far. They should be the same. The first tube, the brown was too light. It was lighter than the other tube. And then, so I cranked the third tube and the pattern was completely different than all the other three tubes. With this pattern yarn, not so much this one, but with the one I'm about to crank and some of these other ones, uh, the two will knit up completely different depending on what end of the ball you're knitting them from. So when you have the ones with the um, colors in a certain sequence, uh, you know what, not this one either, but the colors are like in a short sequence. When you knit them up, what happens is you'll have these dashes of color that jump side to side. If you knit them up the other way, the color spirals around. And that gets a little complicated because I have to make sure I'm pulling from the same spot or if I wind it into uh, on the cone, I have to make sure I've wound it the same way. If I, some for some reason, I have to take the sock apart and re-crank it, I have to make sure I crank it from the toe end or it will knit up completely different than the other one. And that just, that kind of gets on my nerves. I like my socks to match. Not everybody feels that way. But when I've hand knit, I have pulled out yards and yards of uh, yarn and cut it off just to make sure that the two socks will knit up the same. So I'm kind of obsessed about that and I don't like the fact that that other one this color is slightly off. So all that to say that I had those tubes and because I couldn't get them to match I decided that I would just make short socks because then you don't see the sock. It's not a big deal. And the second reason is because my mother almost never wears socks with anything. And so instead of making her a full sock, because I needed to work on different sizes, I decided to make a sock, uh, a short sock, so that she can just kind of walk around the house in them. So I've been making these short socks, which is great for leftover yarns, because I have like a size six foot, which is not the smallest. The friend I'm making these for has a size five foot. I'm like, wow, I thought I was like the only adult who had like a tiny foot like that. Most people, most women that I meet have an average size is seven or eight. And everybody always thinks like my feet are super tiny and they are kind of small. I'm not like, I'm an average size person, like five, four, average size woman. So I just have small feet. Anyway, uh, so I can make these with like leftover yarn because I can actually make a uh, you know, I want to say a crew size sock with one ball of yarn for me. And that's one of the reasons I knit toe up. So when I'm using both balls and I'm making, you know, calf length socks, I have enough sock left to make these little ankle babies. But I'm not going to cheat you with an ankle baby. I'm going to make a full size sock. Okay, so on my little sock calculations, wonderful thing about sock calculations, I've done this before. And so I just need to know how many rows I need to crank um, for this. So I'm going to go ahead and hang the heel. I'm going to crank 30 for the heel. And then I'm going to do 80 was good, 90 was better, and I think 110 was one I did, and that's really long. Okay, so let me go ahead and turn the counter on. And let's adjust the tension because the sock, the thing I made yesterday, I turned the tension down way low. So I need to readjust the tension here. So I'm going to go ahead and start cranking. I'm starting slow. I'm checking to make sure everything is knitting. Okay. I'm getting a little stuck here. Which means my yarn is stuck on something. 
Okay, so I see my tension is way down, like where I left it yesterday. And I'm going to adjust that and crank. And I find this tension knob is like not the easiest thing to turn. If I didn't have like these fingernails, it would probably work out much better. I'm turning the knob to the left. And that is turning the tension up. And that means the cam shaft is moving up. So I have to think about it like that because it's not loosely lefty righty tighty. It's complete opposite. So and instead of me looking at the book a zillion times and trying to remember that clockwise is loose and counterclockwise is tight, I just decided to look at the shaft, the cam. And it's going up and there's also like a little gauge over here and it's going down so <laughs> like, like the shaft is going up the gauge is going down I'm turning to the left and they're all completely opposite signals okay let me see if that's where I about right what I'm looking for is I think I had 11 and a half stitches per inch Something is catching down here. I need to deal with that now. And it's touching my basket, so. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, foot loose and fancy free. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and break this. And get it out of the way this thing uh, has slots for three yarns but what I'm finding is in the center piece right here as they come past each other they tangle so I don't really see any reason to, to have three yarns going all the way through I'm just gonna get that baby out of the way and put it off to the side I'm not gonna need it again until I need to uh, start the other sock so it's out of the way all right let me peek and see Okay, you all should be able to see this carefully. Now, this is where I run into trouble. Uh, I could just knit them together, but I'm not going to. Wrap this around a little pig telly, and I want to, um, I'm gonna make sure that it goes over to the stitch where I left off at with the waist yarn, because what happens is it kind of, it opens a space between the two stitches if it doesn't overlap. And when I'm hanging the heel, it kind of pulls and I have a problem. Okay, so let's see. Counter was on. Or it was on. There we go. And I'm going to crank 30. Uh, let me see my little sample sock. I wish I had brought the other one down so you can see this is 15. I'm going to do 30 now I just want to say this that on a hand knit sock I would rib and on the machine eventually I'll rib but I haven't used the ribber yet and I'm not really sure where the ribber needles are um, there's a box that I put away with the uh, cone adapter for the antique uh, winder and I'm trying to figure out what I did with that too and so I bet you when I find that box, I'll find the rubber needles. Okay, so anyway, we're just going to hang heels for now. And I'm, I'm cool with hanging heels. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, I'm pretty confident about what's happening here. So I am just going to crank. Okay. Oh, I was confident about what was happening here. Turned off the camera for a moment because I had a little hiccup that needed to be fixed. Uh, just want to say this. If you're watching this and you're like, wow, you know, or if you're watching any of my videos and you're like, wow, that just looks so perfect. Um, I don't I can't really do that yet. Or you feel intimidated or anything. Just don't. 
because through the magic of video recording, I can start and stop this video as many times as I need to and as many ways as I need to and edit. So you can only assume that it's as easy as it looks. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that I didn't mess up somewhere and change it or you know what I'm saying. So <laughs> every once in a while it really is as easy as it looks when I'm doing something. But for the most part, uh, I'm like a real human being like everybody else. So even when I know what I'm doing, things don't always go as planned. Uh, and this machine is a machine touched by human hands. Okay, it didn't divinely drop out of the sky. So some person has to operate it, which is me. And there's going to be mistakes. It happens. And this thing, everything is going like perfectly smooth. You're just cranking along. You, you've gotten to the end of your stock or crucial spot. And then all of a sudden, like the yarn will snatch or just any old thing. Like I better move this now because I can already see this yarn is blowing over to the other cone. That's going to cause me a tension issue. And it will snatch and bam. Next thing you know, I mean, it spits yarn at you like a baby vomits. And so now you've got this pile of yarn on the needles that you can't do a single thing with. And you have no choice but to start all over again. And you're like, no. Okay. Uh, the good thing is it doesn't take as long as it would if you were hand knitting and that happened. But still, you're just like, why does this happen to me? You know, you know especially when you're like in the groove. And this is happening so um i read in reader's digest years ago it had a thing that said to air is human to really screw things up you need a computer and that's kind of how i feel about most mechanical items oh like what is going on here i thought i fixed that i feel that way about most mechanical items is that um everything looks like everything is cool this is cool everything's cool except that when you have a mechanical item and you screw up i think you screw up twice as bad as you would have if you were doing it by hand let me see if i can get no nope, i can bootleg this somehow this was supposed to catch and i swapped it so it would catch and it still didn't catch. At this stage, if I don't get this right, I'm going to have to uh, take everything off again because there's no way to, you don't, you can't really knit back, you can't tink on this, okay? It doesn't really work that way. It's kind of all or nothing. So hopefully that will fix. Let's turn, turn it and see what happens. Okay, that seems to be good. Okay, so I think I'm good here. This one, I did not crank a tube. And so it's going to be a surprise to me what it actually looks like. Okay, I'm going to stop here actually. Because based on the tension, I think this is going to be a, a big enough cup for me. I like that. Okay, now, here's how this works. Now, I just tighten that. I need to take it off. Put those off to the side. Take the belt off because it'll help. Okay, so in order to hang the heel, I'm going to pull it up to where my first line of stitches is. Let me see if you can see that. Okay. 
Okay, good. There we go. All right, so how do I know what a first line is? See, there's this blue line across here, which is my waist yarn where they connect. And uh, you know what? For this purpose, uh, the blue always works really well, except in this case where I have all these blues and purples and stuff. So I might have to get another contrasting color because I do tend to like dark color socks. And I know the blue is definitely not going to work for my black socks. Okay, I'm, so I'm going to follow this down and try to pick something that's pretty close to that spot. So I'll take this one. I need to see where my yarn is too. Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to put it over top of that needle. I'm going to go all the way around. Pick up that line of stitches. And put it over top of these needles. trying not to grab the blue because you don't always cleanly get just that purple with this tool. Of course this gets easier. You can go faster as you get better at it. I have to be careful too because my tension is off and so as I'm picking this thing up to make it easier to see sometimes I'm raising the needles around here and I pulled a few off last time and I was like oh no so then I had to try to figure out how to get these guys back on because if you turn the crank backwards the needles will close then they just drop right off so now I've got all these drop stitches so I had to figure out a clever way to put these guys back on without dropping any of the other stitches and having to start all over again. So I just, I'm putting my hand inside of the cylinder to try to keep those down. I think the last time I used the heel weights, which provided me with enough tension to keep the ones on my left down, but not so much tension that it made it hard for me to pull these stitches. Okay, hanging the heel, or hanging the uh, hem, making the heel, making the toe, are the things that take the most time in making the sock. So, you don't have to watch me. Okay, see, here's, let me show you this real quick. This is what I was talking about, not having um, these guys overlapping or too far apart because it would have been a big gap here if I hadn't overlapped them and when I went to pull this one I would have had like a little mess going on here uh, what I did last time too is I forgot this time as I was going around is I took this extra string and I tucked it underneath the hung hem so I don't have to worry about snipping it afterwards it'll be tucked inside there so maybe I'll bring it this way and lay it down here I was worried that if I tucked it in, if I had to unravel the sock, would I have a problem? But you don't because the best way to unravel it is from the bottom up, from the toe up. And when you get to the part with the hung hem, it just pulls out like everything else. So let me go ahead and tuck that in there. Not that uh, blue part, just the purple part, because I'm going to need that blue part to get the waist yarn out that over there okay I'm not going to well, I'm actually halfway done but I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and you can join me again when I'm ready to close up the, this hem up here So that actually didn't take very long and I need to crank four in order to get in order to get these needles to rise. So I'm gonna put the tension back on. This is where it gets interesting because like I said, the take the tension off to hang the heel so I can pull the stitches, but at the same time, 
Um, I have to have them seated properly. And now I'm going to crank, and I cannot crank without the tension or all the uh, yarn will tangle. So I'm going to try to get this right. Okay, so I've got my little tool here. I'm going to turn slowly. Because we, when these are going to rise, and we want to be careful with them. All right. See, I got a little issue right here. Okay. So. Oh yeah, I need to go on for it a little bit more. In the meantime, over here, uh, these are knitting just fine, and it's closing it up in that space. I'm going to take the two weights off and leave just the base weight on. That should give me enough tension. Okay. And it wants to lift up over there, so maybe not, but just be careful with it. Uh, and of course you probably can't see what I'm doing, but it's the same as I was doing with the other one. Just lifting it, putting it on. That leaves those two stitches on there. Get that blue off. And... Huh. Okay, put my weight. I'm just gonna put one weight back on for the moment. Okay, and I'm gonna put the other one back on so it looks like they both need to go on. I'll take this nice and slow. Okay, so my hem is officially hung. Now, I'm going to set my counter again to zero, and I'm going to crank 80 rounds, okay? And then more like 79, because I already did one complete round. And ideally, this should be just smooth sailing. So you're just watching it go round and round. What are those videos called? The was it ASMR, um, where people find like repetitive noises like that soothing? I, that would irritate me, like the sound of water just dripping or. I don't uh, except for the guy who does leather bags. I find that best in entertaining without any talking. But just listening to me crank might actually make a good one of those videos. Maybe I'll try it. Okay, I'm going to stop. And I thought I had my ruler with me. Honestly. Nope, I don't. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to arm it. Okay, that gives me a good length of about, all right, I'm about mid calf length. So I'm gonna keep going. Okay, this is 65. That's not too bad. Mm, let me go to 70. Okay, so I'm changing this a little. 
and uh, I need to mark that down in my book it's because I have to make the other sock exactly like I made this one and of course I'm gonna forget all right now I'm gonna stop here with this particular portion of the video because I want to crank the heel and I want that to be separate because uh, a different group asked about how I turn the heel so I don't want to run the whole video and they have to get to the hill part so we're just gonna make that totally separate and judging from the clouds out here it looks like it's about to rain so I may need to move my setup so I'm just gonna stop this right here and I'll put a link in the description um, or maybe link at the end of the video to take you to the part where I'm doing the heel and to me that's like the best part the heel and toe are basically the same and that's the hardest part besides hanging that hem part out there uh, the most technical of the parts and I think it deserves some spot all right thank you everybody have a great day and hopefully you'll watch the next segment of this video